Hello everyone, I am Veos and welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program video, but this time we're not talking about space. Before robotics came out and you had propellers and propeller engines and all that jazz, all we had for us Kerbal Space Program players were jets and rockets. So when it came time to building something that could fly like a plane in, in career mode, you're either stuck with a rocket engine or a... Uh, a, a rocket engine. However, Kerbal Space Program is first and foremost, for, foremost a physics simulator, to a point. So many, 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 many a year ago, we discovered that we could actually build our own prop engines. I made a video about this years and years and years ago. And then when I started building uh, vehicles for Solar Nations, which is a very old series that I stopped about midway, Enter's Odyssey perfected the technique of the old prop style engine by placing a few more parts in it that actually stabilized it a lot better. But I thought to myself, how low could you go in the tech tree to build your own prop engine without having to rely on something to help you build a better, more stable one? How, how Flintstone can we get with this bitch? Now to make one of these engines as as good as you possibly can, it's usually a, a combination of linear RCS thrust, thrusters mixed with the thermometer uh, science parts to create a kind of socket where the engine can freely spin inside of. It's not perfect, and yes, it will crack it on you, but at the same time, for the most part, it works just fine. A step below that is the old tried and trusted Sputnik with the small docking port. The Sputnik, for all intensive purposes, is a nice ball-shaped part. You can use the small docking ports as kind of a mid-shift socket as it, as, it, as it spins in one place to try to cushion it and keep it from going completely berserk. Essentially what you're doing is you're building two crafts within each other. One that holds the craft inside of it, and the one that's inside spins freely, pushing or pulling the vehicle forward because of the fact that it's attached to some sort of propeller system. Now it does take some playing around with to get it just right because too tight and you start summoning the Kraken, and of course too loose and it becomes very unstable. You also have to figure out the f the angle that you want to set your fins at or your little wing or winglets or whatever. The reason for this angle is of course because if it's just flat and it spins you're not going to get any pull. You're not going to generate any lift in a certain direction. But it gets tricky and hear me out. The way it works is that even if you're at a standstill and you figure out okay well if I angle these winglets or fins to like say 12 degrees I can see visually by hitting the F12 button that aerodynamically speaking, it's giving me a lot of pull. So that's what I'll set it as, right? However, once you start actually moving forward, things change. And that tilt that you originally put on your wings or your fins no longer has the same strength anymore because the aerodynamic forces going against it are stronger because it's moving forward. Because of this, you need a system to give them a more aggressive tilt the faster you go in order to grab the air, technically speaking. If you just keep them on that small tilt, eventually they'll lose all power and you'll only reach a maximum speed. And sometimes the speed isn't good enough in order to get your plane off the ground. Some fins and some winglets are not created equal. Some have actually more bite than others. You wouldn't think that was the case, but it is. I've found personally that you get more power when the aerodynamic forces for your makeshift fins or propellers are that of a dark blue signature or wing lift rather than any other force or dynamic force. And because of the fact that the technology that we're dealing with here doesn't allow us to have any mechanical parts whatsoever robotic wise, we can't change the tilt of these makeshift propellers during flight. So we have to find one that works for both slow and high speed and stick with it. That means that sometimes these vehicles have a little hard, bit of a hard time trying to take off in some cases. But if you get it just right, you can make it work. 
I know it seems counterintuitive to put more propellers on there in order to get more power, but with KSP, more propellers does equal more thrust. Of course, with more propellers means that it's harder for the reaction wheels to spin, which means that you're either going to have to do one or two things. You're going to have to make your engine much bigger, or you're going to have to do a little bit of part clipping. Now, it's your game. You can do it however you want. I've built ones that have no part clipping at all and built ones that are freaking seriously part clipped all to hell. It doesn't really matter how many reaction wheels you force into one of these makeshift propeller engines. Eventually you're going to reach a limit to where it won't spin any faster and you're stuck with what you got. There have been some individuals that I know of who have designed makeshift propeller engines to be able to actually break the sound barrier and go mock. But this is of course way higher in the tech tree when they have better parts to work with. In this video I'm trying to leave it at about a tier 4 tech level. Now yes I understand that tier 4 also opens up things like landing gears and jet engines. But that's only if you open every single tier 4 science unit available at the time in a career mode. Realistically speaking you're only going to be able to open one or two at a time. So we're going to pretend that we're building this aircraft with tier 4 parts that have been unlocked inside of their little tier 4 selected units that do not include the obvious landing gear and jet engines. As a, as a matter of fact, I'm, I'm even trying to build this thing with the lowest tech parts I can find. How low can I get? Obviously I'm going to need it. I'm going to need tier 4 parts, some of them anyway, in order to make it work. But for the rest of everything else, screw the wings, screw the landing gear, full yabba dabba do, mother fucker. Now I don't know about any of you, but I love playing career mode in 10% science game. I absolutely hate the fact of going somewhere and unlocking 2000 science and then coming back and unlocking the whole tech tree. It's just not fun anymore. Why even play? You just go sandbox and do the same damn thing. 10% science means that when you unlock something for the first time, it was well earned. You fucking went to the damn mountains and back for that shit. Which also means that your ability to build crafts has... you, ha you have to be creative. You have to think outside the box. So as I was saying, we're trying to build a tier 4 level propeller engine for a aircraft of some kind. Tier 4 does not come with the small docking port. So right off the bat, we're going to have some stability issues. It also doesn't come with any way of generating electricity. So whatever power that we have inside of the engine is all we got. Once it's used up, it's done. So what I did when I was designing this very Flintstone-esque aircraft I went back on my old Solar Nations designs. For the landing gear, I used a kind of a skid approach. I also didn't mount the engine in the very front. And the reason is because in Kerbal Space Program, even though, yes, it's a physics simulator, it doesn't exactly simulate physics as well as reality. And so it is my personal experience that when you try to mount one of these things in the front, your landing gears have to be either in the front or sticking further out. Because if you don't, it will eventually nosedive once it gets up to speed. Because you have a small little engine spinning inside of what's essentially another craft. So two crafts. And this of course plays havoc, especially if it's not super stable, making the nose of the craft dive. It's possible I've built fighters this way with the engine in the front. But for this lower tier vehicle, I wanted to get a little bit more stable, so I opted for the engine to be right in the middle, or further back from the cockpit. Like your old World War II vehicles, you want your nose to be propped up in the air already, so that by the time you take off, you're already pointed skywards. And you do also have to worry about engine torque. So keeping the engine in the middle, I think, helps with that. It's not perfect but it does help. Now I did put a small rocket in the back of this craft in order to help with boost or lift or whatever the case may be, but it's only meant to help it. It's not meant to fly the entire way of the destination or be the main engine, which is the reason why I gave it a smaller fuel tank. Just meant to help it off the ground or whatever the case may be. Now in the end, I was able to make this thing fly and it worked very well. However, because we are missing some vital parts, 
efforts making maneuvers in this craft unfortunately will awake the kraken we're talking about two different crafts here one that's spinning violently inside of another one so it's it's not it's not ideal unless you have something to hold that spinning part more securely but it is possible it is possible to make a tier 4 propeller airplane Okay, so this is how I did it. First, get yourself a structural fuselage, a decoupler, and this decoupler will help you decouple the actual engine itself within the fuselage. Now, yes, in this instance, we're going to have to park clip pretty good in order to give, give it enough power to lift off the runway. Just simply hold down shift. Make sure your angular snap is turned off. Now we have four of them just like that. Don't worry about strutting them or anything of that, anything of that nature because honestly, it's not strong enough to really tear itself apart. So I put four sets of four and when you're building make sure everything is central you don't want to have a shaft that's heavier on one side than the other side now in this case i just use a symmetry of eight for the batteries you can put a whole bunch on there if you want a little bit more flight time but without the ability to regenerate power what's what's the use and this should basically be it but now we got to put on a way to control it better now this the experimental storage it's tier four so we can use that because it attaches to the side of things relatively lightweight use the move tool and bring it into the middle and it should it should work now so let's go ahead and get our stay put next it's kind of a ball joint they'll be able to attach to either side we'll bring them in as close as we can to the middle you can turn on rigid attachment if you go into settings and activate advanced tweakables but i wouldn't worry too much about strutting anything now simply take the parent part and flip it over and put it inside so that it can be inside the fuselage at this point i would start putting on my propellers that way it's easier to see where you're attaching them to we're going to use the symmetry of eight to try to get as much thrust as we can give it somewhat of an aggressive angle so that when it starts getting up to speed you can grab the atmosphere a little bit better and again you could play around with this you might find that a more aggressive angle might be better for you once you're done we'll bring the whole thing in like i said before since we don't really have anything to hold this shaft inside the fuselage very well i used a couple of communitrons to kind of keep it from bumping against the walls too much now you're going to have to go out into the game world decouple it and see where it lays down and determine whether or or not you have to bring those communitrons closer or farther away but it's at this moment in time it's the best thing i can think of right now with this limited amount of parts i'm sure if i spent a whole lot of time on it i could probably think about some, something else a little better but it'll be okay now when you're engaging the engine what i like to do is i like to hold down alt and q this activates your trim it sets the trim and of course as we all know Q is a roll key so it sets the trim to have the entire vehicle roll the shaft that's inside the fuselage once you hit spacebar however make sure to hit the alt X key because when you hit spacebar the shaft is already trimmed to an extreme roll but your plane is also still on the extreme roll so best to hit alt X just to make sure that it's no longer on any trim whatsoever hit the T key for our SAS and just let it fly Use the bracket key to switch between the two. So if you want to land, you're going to have to hit the bracket key and either slow down the trim or the trim might cancel on you. You might have to speed it back up to about midway. But about midway is pretty good for this vehicle. It's definitely tricky. This is not going to be an easy plane to fly. It is super low tech. The only lower techest ish I can think of is actually putting a command pod and using the reaction wheel from that, which would obviously mean you're going to put a Kerbal through absolute fucking hell. But now that I was done testing out the vehicle the best of my abilities with the allowed time that I have, it was time to give it a paint job. And I wanted it to give it an old-fashioned paint job. Real old-fashioned. Something that's like a throwback to the 30s. Hell, maybe even no. Yeah. I'd imagine a craft like this just being a mail transport for packages and stuff. Not a whole lot of people would actually want to ride this thing. So there you go.
I think it turned out pretty good. I'm sure if I had more time, I could stabilize it more, get it just right, maybe use some other parts, but for the most part, there you go. And for our channel shout out today, here they are. There you go. Make sure to visit their channel and give them some love. Their channel will be linked in the description below. But anyway, if you liked what you saw, please leave a like. And if you loved what you saw, consider subscribing. We also have a membership program. If you become a member, you get a cool little emojis and badges and stuff next to your name. Pretty cool. Check it out. Also, please don't forget to click on that bell notification so YouTube will remind you when I upload stuff. Because if you don't, it will, like I said so many times before, pull your shirt over your eyes and beat you with a banana. <laughs> There you go. You've been warned. Anyway, love you all. Stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. Bye-bye.